Okay, hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My name is Robert, I'll be your co-host. This is our program on the traditional Japanese tea ceremony with our friend Eriko. Let's go ahead and get started. We already welcome people, so we'll skip that. Um, my name is Robert Kellerman, I'll be your host. I'm joining you currently from Texas, um, so thanks for being here. And a quick question for you, what time is it where you're at? Uh, reason being is because Erica is joining us from Japan and she's going to walk us through a traditional Japanese tea ceremony. But one thing that's really fascinating about the world that we're living in in the world of Zoom is the time difference. So in Washington, D.C., where our organization is based at, it's 9 p.m., 8 p.m. where I'm at here in Texas, 6 p.m. for our friend in Los Angeles. Uh, not sure if we have a lot of people from London joining us today um, because of the time difference, but it's 2 a.m. there. And where Erica is at, it's currently 10 o'clock in the morning. So normally at this time, I would say good evening to people. Um, but if you're in the time zone that Erico's in, I will say good morning. Uh, this is the second of a two-part program that Erico has been doing for us to teach us about Japanese history and culture. The first program that we had a few weeks ago was called The World of Japanese Kimono. And if you missed that program, or if you wanna watch it again, or if you know anyone else that would be interested in seeing it, there's a recording of it on our YouTube page. I'll post the link for it in the chat, or you can always just Google us or look up our channel, which is Washington DC History and Culture. But tonight or today, uh, depending on what part of the world you're joining us from, Erica is gonna be walking us through a traditional Japanese tea ceremony. So with that, uh, I wanna welcome Erica. Thanks so much for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule to share your knowledge and experience with us. And so with that, I'll turn things over to you and Erica, it's all yours, take it away. Thank you so much, Robert. Welcome everyone to Japan. Um, can you see me? Oh, um, hold on one second, Erico. They might not be able to just yet. Okay. Welcome everyone. I'm so happy to have you along. Hold on, Erica. I'll fix that in one second. Okay, one moment. Okay, try it now. There we okay. go. Okay. Okay, here I am. <laughs> okay, we can okay. see you perfectly. Welcome everyone to Japan. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you along. Um, my name is Eriko, Eriko Shiratori. I'm a tour guide from Tokyo, Japan. And thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, some of you have joined my um, first kimono, uh, first event, kimo um, kimono. It was about history of kimono, and you might have uh, remember. You might remember this beautiful kimono. So this was um, made by my great grandfather. Uh, he made this for um, his granddaughter, um, who is my auntie, and today I'm wearing his creation. So today we'll experience authentic. Japanese tea ceremony by watching a beautiful demonstration and drinking a nice cup of matcha. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so if you, yeah, just, um, it'll be a very relaxing tour. So make yourself a nice cup of tea, coffee, or even a glass of wine, and let's enjoy drinking it together. And I find it fascinating that many cultures around the world have some form of tea ceremony and Japanese tea ceremony might be a little bit different from what you are familiar with, um, but it's about enjoying a cup of matcha. Um, it's as simple as that. So let's enjoy this moment together. So I'm going to uh, flip the camera around for you. So today uh, I'm in a beautiful park called Nanushinotaki Garden in Tokyo, Japan. Okay, let me switch the camera around to you. Okay. I love this garden and the tea house is located within this garden. Uh, every time I come here, I forget that I'm in uh, the middle of the city. Look at this beautiful lush green. So this park was originally a garden on a private residence of um, Hatano family. So he was um, 
Villa Tetman. But uh, they shared the garden with the public and it was the popular, it was very popular as a summer retreat. So they have a nice stream throughout the garden and waterfall. Erica, what kind of birds are those in the background? Oh, you can hear the birds. Um, they are, uh, some of them are um, um, mezido. We call them mezido, white eye, because they have white circle around, around their eye. And they love, um, you know, enjoying nectar on cherry trees. We might spot them because I found a beautiful cherry tree um, just in front of the tea house. So it's an interactive tour, so you can uh, ask me anything. And I'm really happy to enjoy this moment uh, with you today, even though we are so far away. So before we, we enter the tea house, we will walk through a garden. And this is a part of the tea ceremony. So tea ceremony has already begun once you step in the garden. And it's a great opportunity to calm your busy mind. So you see, it's a transition from the everyday world to the ceremony uh, spiritual space. So actually, many Japanese gardens are designed by tea masters. So that's why there is always a tea house within a Japanese garden where you can sit and enjoy, enjoy the view. Maybe, uh, maybe there is a Japanese garden in your in your city. So every time I visit a Japanese garden, I think, you know, uh, I should do this more often because it's so nice. It's very relaxing, um, and it really helps me calm uh, my body and mind. But uh, you know, life gets in the way, and then I forget. So I really encourage you to um, enjoy walking through a Japanese garden if if you have one near you. Well, now I can hear the sound of water. So let's walk down this way. So the tea house, uh, tea house in this garden is really small actually, but it's my favorite. So the idea is that we'll isolate ourselves in the tea room where we can feel safe and enchant all our senses. So we would experience um, the tea ceremony from the guest point of view today. So let's enjoy the moment of Zen together. But uh, let me share a brief history of tea. So a tea ceremony is a tradition established by Zen monks and that has been followed for more than a millennium. So it's practiced by both men and women from all walks of life. So anyone can um, practice tea ceremony. And then you don't need fancy, fancy utensil or you know, fancy tea house to in order to enjoy uh, tea ceremony. So, hope you can uh, enjoy drinking a cup of cup of tea with with me today. Let's have a look at the beautiful waterfall. So it's Saturday morning, and they are. Lots of local people out in the out and about enjoying themselves. Yes, yes, men and women enjoy uh, enjoy drinking green tea in the same tea house. Mm 
now uh, flesh leaves are coming out. We call them Shinjoku new gleams, like last green, and it is so bright and it really cheers you up. I can see um, I can see a bird in the middle of the screen. Okay, let's go down here. There's a beautiful cherry tree. So cherry blossoms are now coming to an end. You know, just when you think cherry blossom season has started, it's already coming to an end. <laughs> uh, but this is a late blooming cherry blossom. They come and bloom in uh, mid-April. So the main variety of cherry trees, um, most of the petals uh, have, have fallen already in central Tokyo, but we have this late blooming cherry blossom called yae sakura. Yae means uh, like a multi-layer. So it's a multi-layered blossom. Look at them. And I had a lot of great thing about uh, cherry trees in Washington, DC, uh, surrounding uh, Tidal Basin. And I would love to go visit um, Washington, D.C. during cherry blossom season one day. It's, this one is so fluffy, right? <laughs> uh, it's like pinkish cotton candy. They are covering the whole tree. And then there is a tea house right behind us. And she is that tea house. Let me introduce her. Konnichiwa, ohayou gozaimasu. So she is going to uh, perform tea ceremony for us today. And you are invited as a guest. So thank you very much. And this is Namie, N-A-M-I-E. She's my mom. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Welcome. <laughs> yes, she's been practicing uh, tea ceremony more than 20 years now. Okay, let's go in. Okay. Erico, make sure you tell her we're honored to have her as a guest as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so there is a garden within the garden. So the tea ceremony is a tradition established by Zen monks. Um, and then, you know, they, it, at the beginning, it was thought as a medicine, green tea. Uh, green tea was thought as medicine because it's got lots of nutrition and amino acids and, um, and then also a little bit of caffeine. They really liked it. Um, so tea seeds were brought into Japan by the monks over 1,000 years ago, and they used it as a way to stay conscious through long meditation sessions. Uh, anyone does meditation here? So if you, and you are not the only one who falls, falls asleep <laughs> during the meditation session, so Zen monk needed to be awake uh, during long meditation sessions. So Masha was perfect for that. So this is a beautiful rustic tea house. And then the second thing we do before entering the tea house is just like when visiting temples, uh, guests perform, um, guests always do a purification ritual by washing their hands at the stone basin. Uh, we have waterfall right in front of us. And let me wash my hands.
So you often see these uh, stepping stones in Japanese gardens, and then you may think it, it's very hard to walk on these stones, but it's exactly the point. So they are uh, placed uh, so that you can slow down your pace and enjoy the view from every angle. So here, there is a water basin here. So let me wash my hands here. With a bamboo ladle. Okay. Now it's time to go into the tea room. So, but there are lots of windows. Um, but where should I go in? Where is the entrance? of the tea house. Let me show you the main entrance. Come with me. Look at this tiny sliding door. And this is the main entrance to the tea house. You may be surprised, this is so tiny. Let me show you. Like, like this much. How can you go in, right? <laughs> so tea ceremony flawless during the age of samurai, samurai warriors. Um, so it's a little bit surprising, right? Samurais are the ones who con conducted tea ceremony, samurai and then also Zen monks. Um, so, Samurai had a very strict hierarchy about, um, you know, after a long day, they could come into a small tea room and then, you know, start the peace in their mind. Um, so Samurai, what's the one thing Samurai always carry? Samurai warriors do carry something um, with them all the time. And that's, not allowed in the tea room. So which is a long samurai sword. Long samurai sword could not go through this tiny door. So what they have to do was they have to put their long swords down, um, place them outside and bow their head to go into the tea room. The idea of that is, um, so inside the tea room, you know, they, everyone has to bow their head. So inside the tea room, uh, it's equal. Everyone is equal. And then also there's no weapons. Uh, it's very safe. So let's go in. Welcome to the tea house. Let me show you around. So here is the tea room. Now we are in. So the samurai do not blink um long sword into the tea house but what's the one thing we don't blink um into the into the tea house today can you guess we do not have there there are no samurais anymore <laughs> uh, we do not have long swords <laughs> uh, it's illegal <laughs> to carry them 
But um, today's world, uh, we are encouraged not to bring watch and then also uh, mobile phone into the tea house because it's really about enjoying the moment uh, by drinking a, a nice cup of matcha. So inside the decor is very simple. The idea of Japanese beauty is simplicity. So it's not about adding something, it's quite opposite. So you would slice off all the decorations and really enjoy the colors and textures of the original form of nature. So you see this is wooden structure uh, with mud walls, sliding doors with washi paper, uh, you know, light comes through but you still have privacy. So very simple and rustic. So Wabi Sabi, the Japanese philosophy of finding beauty, sleekiness and imperfection. So if you see, and okay, have a look at. The first thing we look at is this. So they have a message from the tea house scattered around the tea room. And there, this is the theme of tea ceremony today. Um, it says, Hibikore Kozitsu. So every time tea house picks something different, thinking about the guest. So Hibikore Kozitsu means every day is a good day. <laughs> so, you know, we are influenced by what's happening around us all the time. Uh, we wake up in the morning it's, and it's cooling outside and then we think, oh, what a bad day. Uh, it's so cold and then it's raining. But what this um, scroll represents is that you can find like a tiny, tiny things that uh, really light up your day within 24 hours. So that's a message from the tea house. And there is a beautiful flower. Uh, yes, you can visit tea house at uh, any time. Again, there is a tea house in a Japanese garden and they often serve uh, matcha green tea for visitors. So. Erica, where, always... where is this tea house at related to like say um, downtown central Tokyo? Uh, so. It's, um, so this is a district called Oji, O-J-I, and then it's uh, Northern Tokyo, Northern part of the city. And it's basically a residential area. And uh, anyone can actually, so today we have the tea, uh, tea room to ourselves. So the, this tea, tea house belongs to the city. And anyone can rent this uh, tea house uh, if they want to host a tea ceremony uh, for a day. It's a great idea, right? And a flower is a lens in the way they are in the field, very simple. So tea ceremony is very, very seasonal. Um, seasonal, you know, touches everywhere. And then you see the kettle looks like ready. Looks like it's ready. So let's start the tea ceremony. Now we are going to witness a beautiful demonstration of the tea ceremony.
So, through the ceremony, Shat is a harmonious ritual. Please, you welcome to us at the, at the entrance, but normally uh, it wouldn't happen. So, you come in, there's nobody in the room, and then you notice, um, you know, a couple of messages from the, um, yeah, from the tea house. And then when you sit down in this position, the ceremony begins. And then this is a beautiful tatami room. You're covered with tatami mattress. And then we sit on the floor. But of course, um, if you are not comfortable with this, uh, you can, um, you know, chairs can be provided. So there's nothing to worry about. Yes, very simple, isn't it? Let me close the window. That sound of water might be too much. So there's another um, uh, beautiful saying that's deeply associated with tea ceremony that goes, Ichigo Ichie. Has anyone heard of it? Ichigo Ichie. A floor made for, uh, yeah. The floor is made of um, straw. It's a, uh, yeah, it's nice and soft. Now, she is cleaning, uh, cleansing the toes, and it's part of the tea ceremony. So the red tea cloth uh, she's using is called fukusa. It's used for cleaning tools by folding them into various shapes. So it's not just cleaning the toes. So by doing that, uh, she is collecting her mind, uh, you know, through the process of cleaning and doing so purifies our mind as well. So of course they have been already washed. Uh, it's a way of showing her respect to the guests and the guests see that and feel that they are nicely treated. You know, there's no poison in anything, you know, it's a, it's a very safe place. And then in the tea room, you might notice uh, the sound you have, um, you have, yeah, you haven't noticed before the, the sound of water boiling or the tools touching each other, or, and then also you can feel the warmth of tea in your hand. So it's really about enjoying it, using your senses, but without <laughs> having a conversation. So yeah, going back to the saying, Ichigo Ichie, so what that means is that uh, treasure every encounter therefore it will never recur. So this is the associated with uh, tea ceremony. So tea ceremony is called sado in Japanese. It can be translated as uh, the way of tea. So it's really about not the journey itself. Uh, it's very fleeting and we might enjoy tea, but this moment with you in this setting is once in a lifetime experience and will never happen again. So with this in mind, we can mm, be able to appreciate the beauty, beauty and impermanence of this experience. So that's what we are doing today. But 
you know, do I live by the philosophy? I don't think so. So coming um, to a tea ceremony, it's a good reminder to do one thing at a time and enjoy the moment. She said, What that means is that please have your sweet. So before drinking matcha, a sweet is served. Look at this beautiful seasonal sweet. So they are traditional sweets called nerikiri. They are made of a sweet bean paste and they come in seasonal design. So every two weeks, new design uh, up here. And then right now we have uh, peony, and then this one's got beautiful butterfly on it. So it's a spring theme. So when you're invited to a tea ceremony, you have this piece of washi paper, um, traditional handmade paper. It's a small fork, so you can put it in front of you. Um, which one should I try? Probably this beautiful peony. So it really gives us a sense of season. It's pretty, isn't it? So let me have some. So you can cut into small, uh, small piece. Oh, I see. So inside, um, it's made with white bean paste outside, and then inside, uh, red bean paste is uh, filled inside. Let me try some. Mm. Has anyone tried traditional sweets made of uh, sweet bean paste? Uh, it's so delicious. Um, it's not too sweet, it's not overpowering. There's a nice softness, um, like a roundness to the flavor. Um, you, don't, you don't really taste beans, um, but um, the texture is very silky and smoothy, and it will go really well with uh, matcha green tea, which is a little bit bitter. So you always eat sweet before, before matcha. And then after that, uh, a cup of matcha will be served. It's almost too cute to eat. Look at this. Now she is, so normally they are, um, guests lining up next to me, then I would you know, hand it over to the next person. But today it's only me and you. So now she is going to make a cup of matcha.
So seasonal events played an important role in the daily living of the Japanese people. So each month there is some kind of event that marks the time of year. So yeah, it's a nice way to enjoy the season, you know, eating traditional sweets in the shape of seasonal flower. It's, um, yeah, it's a fun way to enjoy the season. Now she's mixing matcha with, uh, she's mixing matcha using bamboo whisk. Later, we're gonna try making a cup of matcha together. So if you have a glass of, uh, yeah, a beverage, a cup of tea with you, Let's enjoy drinking it together now. But he is very. Look at this beautifully made matcha. So since she mixed it nicely, the top is very frosty. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we enjoy um, matcha green tea. Hi, hey, you guys. Just one moment. Okay. So now tea is served. So let me show you how we enjoy it. What am I trying so I said, thank you, thank you for making making a cup of tea to the host. So by handling the cup with both hand carefully, uh, you can show respect and gratitude to the tea host. And everything, uh, let me just do this. You can. Put tea cup on your left arm and then uh, gently support it with your right hand. Rotate the cup twice clockwise. Why are you doing this? Um, the reason of rotating the cup is that you know everything used in the tea ceremony, every item is considered a piece of art, including tea cups. And every teacup has front and back. And then front side, you can tell because it's got beautiful design on it. It's got cherry blossom design on it. And then back, nothing. And when tea is served, the front side is facing you. And the idea is that you don't put your lips on a beautiful design that's on the cup. And then also, uh, it's rotated. So this beautiful side is now facing the tea host. Thank you. 
So it's very rich tasting matcha. Uh, it's a little bit bitter at the beginning, then, uh, then sweetness comes afterward. Um, and then the top, again, the top is very frosty. So it feels very uh, soft in your mouth. And yeah, that's a good indicator. Um, matcha having a nice, um, in, matcha is in, um, how can I say? Has a nice form on the top. It's a good matcha. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna, um, I said, thank you for the tea, that was delicious. And then it's very important to drink up. Um, so there's nothing left in the teacup so that you can actually rotate the cup, um, have a look at the teacup that is considered a piece of art from every angle. You can even flip it over. And then there's normally the name of the clockman that made a tea cup inscribed in the back of the cup. So you can have a look at this. And even though um, chatting is kept to minimum throughout the tea ceremony, uh, it's normally considered polite to um, give compliments, uh, compliment the host by uh, compliment the host on their teas utensil and tools. So you can say, yeah, whatever you think, uh, it's a beautiful cup with cherry blossom design on it. So thank you very much. So that's how you drink a cup of uh, tea. Um, how was it? Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and then I hope you enjoy drinking your cup of tea. So thank you very much. And now, why don't we have a, so after this, uh, normally the tea host will perform a closing ritual. And then when tea host leaves the room, that's the end of the tea ceremony. But uh, today, um, yeah, we are here together. So why don't we have a look at how to make matcha, a uh, nice cup of matcha uh, together. Let's have a closer look. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. So in the 16th century, drinking tea was transformed into a beautiful ritual of tea ceremony. And it was in the age of samurai. And then, you know, Japanese samurai, Oh, baby is crying. Baby is crying in the back of the tea house. <laughs> so they don't know if they'd live or die tomorrow. And they could come into a small tea room and calm their mind by drinking a cup of matcha. So they practice the tea ceremony to search the peace in their mind. But today, uh, anyone can enjoy tea ceremony, men, women, from all walks of life, right? So, so these are all considered a piece of art. The kettle, there is a classman for each item. They specialize in, uh, for example, this iron kettle. And then this is beautiful, mizusashi. So water is boiling in the kettle, but this contains cold water. So you can adjust the temperature of tea, uh, depending on the gas. And then inside, so this is Natsume. Can you open this for us, please? So this one is teaspoon. And then inside is matcha powder. じゃあ、あの、ちょっと
You know, matcha is the oldest way of drinking tea. So all the tea we know today are extracted, like, you know, green tea, black tea, woolen tea. Matcha and green tea come from the same plant, but um, how they grow is different. The matcha doesn't get the like sun covered under the blanket so that it gets concentrated. And after, so they are ground into a very fine powder like this, known as matcha. So when we drink um, extracted tea, uh, lots of nutrition remain in the tea leaves. But matcha, you can drink the whole tea leaves because they are ground into a fine powder. So you get full benefit of the tea. So we really, we really want to, um, how can I say, keep this uh, tradition. Okay, there you go. That's how you mix matcha. Look how fast her wrist is moving. Now, lots of bubbles. So matcha has got lots of vitamins, amino acids, and just a small amount of caffeine uh, gives you enough energy. So, but we don't really drink matcha when we are thirsty. Yeah, it's more of, more of a ritual, you see? And yeah, in this digital world, um, there's something special about being able to hold something in your hand and, you know, just, um, that's that. <laughs> Feel the warmth. <laughs> you know, it, it, it. <laughs> so normally tea hearts uh, does not participate in drinking tea, during tea ceremony, but today is a special occasion. So <laughs> let her enjoy a cup of, a cup of tea. So tea host put everything she or he has into a cup of tea uh, with respect that this moment um, will never repeat itself. So it's really about enjoying the moment uh, with someone you someone you care about. So when you are invited to a tea ceremony, um, it's a very honorable thing. So in Japanese tradition, a traditional arts and martial arts, it's very important to learn the fundamentals and then repeat them until you get to the point where you can do each process without thinking and you become the embodiment of the philosophy, then you can break with, you know, that tradition and create your own technique. But uh, yes, it's really about the journey. So let me show you this, uh, my favorite tool I uh, used in the tea ceremony. This is called chasen. Look at this beautiful bamboo whisk. So what's amazing is that it's, uh, this is just one bamboo and they've just sliced it into little thin pieces to look like this. So it's all connected. You see, it's all connected here. They are just sliced into very, very thin pieces. So I think it's a great souvenir if you ever come to Japan. And then 
yeah, you can make nice, um, you know, make matcha in a nice glossy consistency. Yes. So it's about, uh, you can find it from uh, $15 or $20 to a couple of thousand dollars. <laughs> but uh, yes. Um, uh, how long have you been using this? For a nanen sake? Mm, so, nana nen gura. So, nana nen gura. So, yeah, she's been using it for five years. Beautiful whisk. Hi. So, now she's going to close the ceremony. So, we isolate ourselves in this tea room far from the rest of the world. And this is where you can wake your old senses up. So, you know, in, in you know, today's world, time passes by so quickly and information is overflowing. And I believe that enjoying a cup of tea will help you feel relaxed and it's about setting your heart at peace so you don't have to do the full ritual at home you can bring a little zen into your life sorry i missed lots of your questions so i'm going to answer your question uh, at the end of the tour She said she's going to close the ceremony. I love this tea room so much because you, you forget that you are in a city with 14 million people, right? You can hear the sound of waterfall and enjoy a cup of matcha. And now she's pouring cold water into the kettle. Yes, there is a um, um, there is an entrance door, another entrance door you can use, um, you know, for people with in you know, wheelchair and uh, if you are uncomfortable with you know, you know, going through the tiny tiny entrance. So don't worry. And then again, you don't have to sit on your knees on the tatami floor. Uh, this is a traditional room. And then the so tatami room, one tatami is a 90 centimeter by 100 cent 180 centimeter. And then it's So this room can be described as eight tatami room. And this is a very common site. And then maybe like eight people can sit as a guest but there is uh, a lot smaller tea room as well. 4.5 tatami room, just uh, half of this size. So nothing very, um, 
how can I say? Um, everything is very subtle and it's really about enjoying wabi-sabi, rustic beauty and the beauty of impermanence. And you can feel that in this very simple tea room. <laughs> Does it look hard to sit down and stand up in a kimono? So she just carried all the items outside the room. Uh, yes, exactly, Lily. It's like they sliced off all the unnecessary things and then it's really about the beauty of simplicity. So everything has a, has a purpose. And then she just closed the door and then you are left with kettle. And that's the end of tea ceremony. So. Uh, remember when we walked in, there was nobody. We sit down and the uh, ceremony began. And now we are left with the kettle. So that signals the end of the ceremony. So this, uh, this uh, how can I say, fireplace is called Lo. And then they, they have this uh, beautiful panels and uh, he host. Uh, sit in front of. Uh, it can be done without the panel, but um, with this, uh, you don't. Um, you can protect the walls, and then you know, tea host uh, can appear clearly against the white panel. So thank you everyone for joining the tea ceremony. I uh, hope you enjoy this experience. And now. Um, if you have uh, any question, can you please uh, put it in the chat again? Thank you very much, Robert. Erica, thank you. That was really awesome. Does your um, does the kimono that your mom wearing have any historical significance? You talked about the one that you have. But what about does hers have any historical significance? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, the kimono she's wearing is also made by. Um, my great grandfather, so oh, wow. her great uh, grand, her grandpa. So she has um, my great grandfather had two daughters and three uh, granddaughters. So there are a lot of women <laughs> in the family, and then uh, so he made a lot of kimonos for women, and then this one was made for my auntie, and that one was uh, made for my mom, and so we can all share the beautiful kimono he created. Oh, wow. Do you know how many of his kimonos still exist um, today, in like in your family? Um, probably uh, 50 of them. I We really wow. have to take- 50, five, good, zero? Yes, five, zero. Wow. You really have to take good care of them because now it's, um, they were, they have been passed on three generations and, you know, some, some parts are damaged, but um, yeah, I'm responsible for taking good care of them. So let's have a look at the detail of the kimono. kimono. So let's go this way. Wow. So this kimono is for spring. <laughs> and then it's got a beautiful tie-dye pattern. So you see like a small pattern. So 
So craftsmen put a string around it and then they dye the whole garment. Then, the, then after it gets dry, the, all the threads are removed. And then, so you see these white patterns. They are left undyed. And then it's got a beautiful hand embroidery like this. Erica, during the whole entire program, you and your mom have been receiving a lot of compliments. I know you weren't able to see all the compliment, comments. Uh, <laughs> you and your mom have both been receiving all kinds of compliments from Washington, D.C. and other places throughout the world. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> if you want to learn more about the kimonos, instead of um, Erica uh, repeating all the answering all the questions on that, you should just watch the program that she did um, previously. It's on our YouTube channel. She went through the whole entire history and culture and the fitting and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll refer you to that one. Let's see, some other questions that came up. The, the water features outside, are those all man-made, natural, or a combination of both? Oh, yes, good question. So this used to be a residence of, um, uh, which person in the in the village, the head of the village, and then there used to be seven waterfalls in the garden, so they were all natural. But since this area is now so urbanized, um, they are now the water is pumped up. So during the day, so you can only see water uh, waterfall from uh, 10 a.m. To 4, 4, uh, 4 p.m. But it used to be seven waterfall, they were all natural. So this is located on the hill, and then people really enjoyed it, um, especially in the summertime uh, as a summer retreat, because, yeah, people love enjoying by the water. Oh, okay. And then what about um, who decides what type of tea is going to be served? And do they put any, they probably don't put any sugar in the tea. That was, I think right, Americans right. are into the sugar. But it's up to you, yeah. Uh, we do not put sugar or milk in matcha green tea because um, um, maybe it tastes better without them, but, but it's totally up to you. Um, but the tea use depends on the host, uh, host and guest. So normally planning a tea ceremony takes um, about two weeks. So he has to think about the guests and then choose a scroll, hanging scroll, flower, seasonal flowers and seasonal sweets. And then also um, what kind of tea uh, they're gonna use. Uh, if they prefer like uh, rich, rich flavor or a little bit sweet, uh, sweetness. So it all depends on the on the guest and the tea horse thinks about the guest and then choose the perfect tea leaf. And then a lot of matcha green tea uh, cultivated in Kyoto, a place called Uji, uh, U-J-I, and they cultivate lots of um, high quality matcha green tea there. And yes, the matcha from Uji is very, very, very popular. Ash, I'm trying to think if you came to the United States, what like Washington, D.C., what possibly we could show you that would compare to this? I mean, we have um, hamburgers, pizza, Coca-Cola, and uh, milkshakes, not quite as elegant as a tea ceremony. <laughs> I should um, try New York, New York pizza. <laughs> yeah, New York pizza. <laughs> um, let's see. So some people joined us late, and they asked questions that you answered you mentioned earlier, but we'll just repeat them again. How, is there a certain number of maximum number of people that can attend a tea ceremony? And is it uh, mixed gender, men and women? Can they both be at the tea ceremony? Yes, mixed gender, definitely. Uh, so anyone can attend tea ceremony, uh, both men and women, children. And it all depends on how big the tea ceremony is. So, so this is uh, conducted in this tea room, eight tatami room. So probably like eight people can sit as the guests. 
But、um, in Queen, we have a lot of tea ceremony called Nodate, N O D A T E. Nodate、uh, is a tea ceremony conducted under the sky. So, a lot of Japanese gardens hold Nodate tea ceremony and invite a lot of people, more than 100 people, because you know, there's no limit. The garden, gardens are very spacious. So, anyone visiting the garden can attend. The tea ceremony. Tea is served under the blue sky, and we can enjoy seasonal flowers outside. But, um, a t i n o t a door or similar to the door, I know, kitchen or door. So, take a look, Miss Edison. And then, let me show you the tiny tea room. So, this tea house also has a tiny one, 4.5 tea tatami room. So, this is,、uh, yeah, it's actually smaller than that. It means、uh, three tatami mat. And, and then you see this is,、uh, this is where you,、uh, you boil your water. Yeah, you can put charcoal in it. And then, so this is a fireplace. So, You see, it's so tiny, right? Probably how many people can sit here? So, tea host would sit there, and then maybe, maybe one, two, two guests. So, this is a tiny, tiny tea room. It's very intimate, right? So, tea room is considered as an, another world. Yeah, just being away from everyday world. And you can enjoy this moment. Okay. And then what about different times of the year?、Um, it's spring now, but what about what would people do like in the summer and the fall and the winter? Yes, summer and winter. So it's very seasonal.、So A、uh, tea cup used in the tea ceremony would be changed、um, depending on the season. So, in the summertime, uh, uh, so tea cup would be very delicate and thin. And then you can enjoy matcha cold as well in the summertime. It's very hot and humid in summer in Japan. And then in the wintertime,、uh, so by the way,、um, Yes. So in the summer, so this is actually、uh, at the end of, by the end of April, so the kettle is set like this, but、um, in、uh, hot summer months, so they would put the kettle on the tatami floor, so, so it will be elevated. So, how each item is placed in the tea ceremony, of course, and then arranged every season, but they can all be conducted in the same, from the same tea house. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay. What about Doug and Vic, Vicky asked?、Um, both lifted the tea three times. Is that significant? Three times. Oh, yes, yes.、Uh, we normally finish drinking tea with just three sips, three sips.、Um, but it's, a, it's a, it also up to you. So that's the yeah, normal way of drinking tea three sips.、Um, but it depends on how much tea is in the tea cup. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so let's see. We've gotten a lot of questions、um, throughout the program. If we haven't gotten your question yet,、um, feel free to type it again in the chat in the QA and we'll try and get to as many as we can.、Um, let's see. What about someone asked the purpose of the Chan Ayu tea ceremony? C H A N 
O U O Y U. The C H A N O Y U. Oh, no, you. Yes, yes. The pur purpose of that? Tanoyu. Uh, Tanoyu uh, means peace ceremony in Japanese. Uh, the way of peace. The way of peace. So we practice peace ceremony not, um, not because we want to achieve something. Uh, it's about um, you know, bringing yourself back to uh, you. So the way of peace. So we really, um, by practicing peace ceremony, we enjoy this moment. So that's, um, so tea ceremony was perfected in the 16th, 17th century by a powerful, uh, very popular tea master called Sen no Ritsu. And then, so he, uh, that's his idea. So he really emphasized on simplicity um, and then the, really enjoying the beauty of, um, you know, something that comes with time, like rustic beauty and the um, beauty of imperfection. So. Okay. So it, then, it's not about, uh, it's not just about drinking tea. Uh, it's all about appreciating the moment. So that's, uh, that's the core of Chanoyu, the way of tea. Okay. So it's not just the tea, it's the whole experience. Yes, it's, it's like a ritual, right? It's a very, we call it um, like a group meditation. So without exchanging words, uh, we can really enchant our senses. Yes. Let's see, this was a question from earlier. Someone asked, what is the purpose of pouring cold water into the kettle at the end? Oh yes, so that, signifies the end of the ceremony. So, um, so that means uh, the host is not going to make another cup of tea. So actually before she said that she's gonna close the ceremony, she asked us, would you like another cup of tea? And then um, I said, no. And then she poured cold water. Uh, so water is not boiling anymore. So that signifies the end of the ceremony. Okay. And then what about, do they do, tea, do you do tea ceremonies for special occasions like birthdays or anniversaries or things like that? Oh, you could, you definitely could, but um, not necessarily because <laughs> again, you don't exchange words, right? Uh, it's like a um, meditative uh, way of enjoying the moment. Um, so yeah, I don't, heard a lot of people doing that um but uh it's yeah more of um it's more tied to each season so japanese season um is divided into 24 seasons and then you know the traditional sweet sweet so nerikiri the new designs um appear every two weeks and so we we really enjoy each season so you can host a tea ceremony uh, as often as once every two weeks. Uh, but again, <laughs> uh, it takes a lot to prepare for the tea ceremony. So yeah, uh, it depends on the person, how often they uh, host the tea ceremony. But uh, yes, definitely once every season. Okay. At awesome. least four times <laughs> a okay. year, yes. Awesome, thank you. So I was telling people in the chat and the Zoom um, that not only are you an expert on kimono and Japanese tea ceremony, but also paper folding. Uh, and so some people are interested in that. So if you wanna join up for uh, Erico's paper folding class, you should check out her Hago and Beams page. I posted those in the chat. Um, or you can also find those in the event description um, where you signed up for this program, either on Eventbrite or Meetup. Um, Erico, can you, would you mind, like what are some other things that you um, do on your other programs besides kimono and tea ceremony and paper folding? So I'm from Tokyo. The favorite program, that you, the favorite program of yours that I did was when you went to the um, temple uh, where the Olympics were. It was the winter and there was the snow and you had, I think it was a monk uh, with you. Yes, yes, yes. That was, uh, that was my temple. personal favorite. 
Uh, thank you very much, Robert. So I try to show different aspects of Japanese culture through my tours. So kimono is one of them, uh, peace ceremony is one, but um, you know, also pop cultures and uh, you know, I take you on a walking tour around popular uh, popular districts, and then also my my heart lies within traditional art, and then also the beauty of nature in Japan. Uh, enjoying each season, so um, I'll take you on a walking tour around beautiful flower garden. Now tulips are in full bloom, azaleas are coming to bloom. So yes, a city walk tour, and then also seasonal flower tour. Um, are the ones uh, I pour my heart into. Okay. Now, what about there were also a lot of people in the chat and the comments during the ceremony saying that they haven't been to Japan, but they want to go. Um, is there something that maybe surprises people the most about Japan when they visit for the um, first time? Like, for instance, I live in Washington, D.C., and the thing that surprises people the most about D.C. is they think it's just the Smithsonian and uh, monuments. They don't realize there's all these really interesting neighborhoods and restaurants and stuff like that. But what about, is there any particular things that surprise people the most when they visit um, either Tokyo or Japan for the first time? Oh, a lot of people surprised by the fact um, how quiet the city is. Actually, people think of when people think of Tokyo, you know, there are a lot of people packed train, and you know, it's one of the densely populated metropolitan areas in the world. Yet, uh, it doesn't life in Tokyo doesn't mean you know pushing and yelling. yelling. Uh, even though there are 14 million people, life in Tokyo is very, can be very um, relaxing. So people surprised by how quiet the city is. And then also the difference, lots of vending machines and then cool <laughs> convenience <laughs> stores and then people walk on the left-hand side and drive on the left-hand side. Um, all those differences, we living in Tokyo don't really pay attention to. <laughs> okay yeah it's kind of funny whenever you visit a city it, there's probably a lot of things that um you're expecting to see and then a lot that you weren't christine said that she was surprised when she visited japan it was snowing <laughs> oh yeah 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 <laughs> japan get lots of snow especially northern japan crystal powder snow I was surprised watching your program, um, how clean it is for a big city. Some cities in the US are very clean and some um, not so much. Um, whenever I've seen your programs, everything's very clean and neat and orderly and people are seem very polite. And um, so that was really interesting watching your other programs. Oh, another thing uh, visitors uh, get supplies is that uh, there's no trash cans. There's no trash cans on the street. <laughs> So people carry trash with them. And that, that's what we do. So that definitely supplies its visitors. Oh, that's nice because sometimes in Los Angeles, you'll see trash right by the trash can that people couldn't even carry <laughs> a few steps to the trash um, can. So that's, um, that's what we see. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I think we've taken up enough of your time. Really, really want to thank um, not only yourself, but also, of course, your mom for spending time with us and walking us through the tea ceremony. Um, if you join us late, we've been recording the program. We'll post the, um, this on our YouTube channel. Probably won't be till tomorrow, though, because um, we have other programs and stuff coming up, but I'll send the link out. Um, and then I'll also include the links for Erico's other programs. You can find her on Beams and Hago. Um, I've attended a number of her programs. All of them have been fabulous. And then if you want to leave a gratuity or a tip for Erico, you can do so via the PayPal link that I posted in the Zoom chat. And I also, it's in the event description um, as well. So Erica, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, not only to you, but also your mom. It was great to have both of you uh, sharing the tea ceremony. Thank you so us. much. Any, Any final thoughts before we sign off? Oh, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to connect all of, all of you, even though we are so far away. So thank you so much for spending time with us. I had oh, a yeah, great no, time. Thank you. Thank you. We've really enjoyed it. Bye, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.
Okay, everyone, take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. How do you say goodbye in Japanese, Erica? Sayonara. Sayonara. Okay, there you go. Sayonara. Thanks, everyone. Take care. <laughs> Sayonara. Bye-bye. Matane. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you.